Many people fall into the habit of whining, complaining and brooding over what they went through in the past or even in their childhood. Some dwell on the ways they suffered, the love they claim to have lacked from their parents and the bullying they endured at school. But this habit of self-pity and constant reflection on past traumas can trap people in a cycle of negativity and helplessness. In my life, thanks to the teachings of my father, I've always aimed to maintain a practical approach. There are two important two-word mantras that I follow. Number one, so what? Number two, what next? I've previously shared a post and video about one of my major accidents where, by following these mantras, especially the second one, I managed to get medical help in time instead of bleeding and dying on the spot. This post, however, is about the first mantra, so what? The trap of self-pity. We've all come across people who get trapped in a self-pity mode of poor me and why me. Such individuals usually lose their core mental strength, becoming highly vulnerable to manipulation by others. How does this happen? When people are stuck in self-pity, they subconsciously seek out others who will agree with their victim narrative. They want someone to simply listen to them. But for what? The truth is that anyone who lends an ear and validates their feelings acts like a drug. What do drugs, particularly psychotropic substances, do? They make people feel good temporarily, but ultimately they ruin a person's health and well-being. This is the perfect situation for a wolf in sheep's clothing, a pseudo-guru, a person from the opposite gender, or anyone like that to enter their lives. The person in victim mode blurts out even their most personal matters to this new angel who lends them an ear and agrees with them. Later on, when the sheep's clothing falls off and the new person reveals their true nature, the victim finds themselves stuck for life since it would turn out risky to move away from that manipulative person. This is the result of falling for the drug of self-pity and the fake solace offered by the other person. Similarly, those who listen to a complaining person's woes but offer no solutions are doing more harm than good. They provide temporary solace but prevent any real progress or healing. Everyone has faced tough situations in life, betrayal, heartbreak, disappointment. But dwelling on the past and seeking palliation from those who only listen without offering constructive advice is a waste of time and life. It is so simple. In such a situation, just tell yourself, so what, and what next? If one finds themselves dwelling in the past, it is a clear indication that they either do not know what they want, or do not want anything at all. It's like people addicted to substances are only attached to the pleasure the drug gives and are not interested in anything else. The addiction and dependency can get so strong that they can lose their senses, say things and commit deeds they should never have. Those who are entrapped in a self-pity trip do not realize that the pleasure they can attain through knowledge and clarity is far more blissful and everlasting. Learning from the past, living in the present. In my post and video on resetting karma, I emphasized that if one continues to be as they always were, their life will continue to be as it always was. The present is the result of the past, and the future will be the result of the present. If no positive changes are made now, the future will either remain bleak or become even worse. The past is gone and cannot be changed. A sensible person learns from the past, ensures that such situations do not recur, and avoids causing similar harm to others. I have also faced situations of stagnation in my life, which for an action-loving person like me is a terrible thing to happen. If you are nursing mental grievances from the past and feeling wronged by someone, ask yourself these questions and ensure that you truly mean them. So what? What next? Embracing the mantras. Here are two quotes to inspire those who are stuck in the past. Alan Watts I have realized that the past and future are real illusions, that they exist in the present, 
which is what there is and all there is. William Wordsworth Life is divided into three terms, that which was, which is and which will be. Let us learn from the past to profit by the present and from the present to live better in the future. Life for anyone can end in a second. It is too precious and always in a precarious situation. Do not waste it dwelling on something that no longer exists. Embrace these mantras. So what and what next? These simple yet powerful mantras can break the chains of your past, liberate you from the prison of self-pity and set you on a path towards a brighter, more fulfilling future. The power to transform your life lies within you. Embrace it, act on it, and watch as your world transforms into a place of strength, resilience and endless possibilities. Thank you. Stay blessed. Jai Shri Krishna.